What's up everybody, Will Hamilton here, and we're gonna talk about how to beat Novak Djokovic. And in a couple hours, we've got Roger Federer squaring off against Djokovic in the semifinals of the French Open. And as you might expect, I'm picking Roger Federer to win that match. Just kidding, I'm not. I'm going with Novak Djokovic. I know there's a lot of people who have sort of teased me over the years for always picking Federer. And uh, to be honest, a lot of times I picked him, he won. So uh, yeah, not like I'm holding a grudge or anything, but I have noticed uh, that thread, that um, sort of theme among some of the comments. But anyway, I think Novak's gonna win this match. And uh, let's talk about some of the tactics that, that I think would be effective to, uh, effective for Roger in terms of, in terms of playing Djokovic, because obviously Djokovic is playing out of control right now. And he's definitely the best player in the world, even if the rankings might say otherwise. So what I want to do is actually go back to, uh, go back to Indian Wells, 2011 Indian Wells, where these two faced off in the semis, uh, and Djokovic won that in three sets. And you can almost go back to the Aussie Open semis as well uh, from this year, when, when Djokovic beat Fed, but Fed had some success using uh, using the tactic we're going to talk about right now. Now remember, circle is the player, not tennis rackets. Circle is the player, sticks the side they're hitting on for a righty forehand, backhand, reverse up here, backhand, forehand. So with that in mind, you know, when Roger, the way Roger gets into trouble with Djokovic is he tries to hit through him. He tries to be super aggressive, just foot on the gas pedal all the time and he ends up overhitting because Djokovic's defense is sick right now. But more importantly, Djokovic likes, he likes pace and he likes, uh, you know, kind of a, a ball he can get a lot of rhythm on. And that's part of the reason he had success against Rafa. Rafa has a very standard ball. He, uh, he doesn't have too much variety in there. And you actually look back to the Rome semis, Djokovic almost lost that match to Andy Murray, and there's a guy who has a ton of variety. So that's sort of a, you know, a window into how to approach uh, playing Novak Djokovic. Now, Federer, of course, can, uh, particularly at the backhand, has a ton of variety. And where he had success in the Aussie Open semis and then at Indian Wells was this cross-court exchange here Roger would mix it up. You know, initially when Roger lost the first set in, in the Aussie Open and then at Indian Wells, a lot of, uh, you know, trying to hit through the backhand, really trying to hit aggressively, and that didn't really work too well. Djokovic had no problem with that. Federer started pressing again. Too many errors. But then Fed started throwing in the cheese. And the cheese, by the way, is the slice. I give him the cheese, right? So that's what I call slices, the cheese. And then he also used to, uh, to loop the ball, or used to, he looped the ball as well off of the backhand side. A lot of topspin, high trajectory, certainly not ripping it, but you know, getting a lot of arc on there. Don't have a cool name for that. We'll just have to stick with the cheese for the slice. But if somebody thinks of something, leave it in the comments below. So what, uh, you know, what Roger did with that is when he's going topspin slice, you're varying contact depths for Djokovic. You might have, you know, the topspin would be there, and then the slice would be here. And even though the slice is in the court there, that's not that big of a deal because Roger's slice is a laser. The thing, it just like bounces like that high. I don't know, if you've ever seen him in person, seen him play, the slice is like literally, it might even be like that. I mean, that's somewhat of an exaggeration, but the thing like doesn't bounce. So for comparison's sake, we had a similar, uh, situation in terms of the depth with if we put Rafa up here and then we get the down the line exchange so we'll get Rafa we had the down the line exchange Rafa and and Novak in their last couple meetings and Rafa didn't wasn't able to maintain the same you know wasn't able to keep Novak back with his backhand so here you know Novak would go back down the line but then Rafa would would come back down the line with his backhand Novak would be able to step in on some of those and then crank it cross court. But that's off a two-handed backhand drive from Rafa. That ball is way higher in the strike zone, easy for Djokovic to turn on. So we put him over on the slice right here, the slice depth. Novak's not gonna be able to do that because the ball is super low. So he's not gonna be able to turn on it and blast it either cross court or down the line. 
like uh, like he was able to do against Rafa's topspin backhand at an equivalent depth. So a very important uh, distinction to make there. So I think with some of this variety here, Fed, you know, what Fed really needs to be mindful of, and, and Fed is such an aggressive player by nature, he's just inclined to be like, oh, I'm going to play offense. But I really think kind of a more almost Andy Murray's type, you know, kind of cat and mouse cross uh, cross court topspin and slice uh, game with that, all that variety is going to be more effective because it almost, and, and if you look at the Indian Wells match, it really was effective for Roger when he let Novak actually take the initiative and try and be aggressive. And specifically, you'd have these exchanges like this cross court, and then Novak would try and pop one down the line like that. Take the backhand, go line, or maybe run around, hit an inside and forehand. So now you've got this down the line shot, which of course Novak's trying to be aggressive on, he goes after it. Roger is now hitting a running forehand. Roger's got a sweet running forehand. So Roger's reply would be a cross-court angled ball, and that angled shot would pull Djokovic off the court. You know, again, Roger has not been able to hit through Djokovic the last couple times they've played, so I think Roger needs to take, the, the emphasis for Roger needs to be more about court positioning. Get him off the court, and then you have a lot more court to work with, and you can hit a nice, you know, quality shot, but you don't have to blast it through a guy into like a really tiny window, right? So this was the exchange you had, with a quick recap, the exchange you had at, at Indian Wells, cross court, a lot of variety, you know, moving Djokovic forward and back, going to lead to some errors, first of all, on Djokovic's end. Um, and then Djokovic actually took the initiative, would go line here, Fed ran over, running forehand, important to note that the down the line here can't really generate the angle, so Fed's going to be able to get to a lot of these. Now, he's still hitting that running forehand, but Fed's forehand's money, able to get it out over there, get Djokovic running off the court. And then Fed's going to be kind of camping here and turn anything in this area of the court into a forehand, which he puts over into the open court there. Now he's firmly in control of that point. So I think, you know, Djokovic is, is probably going to be establishing a lot of these backhand to backhand exchanges because Djokovic does have the best backhand, in my view, on tour. But he's not going to blow Federer off the court with his backhand. It's not like Federer needs to check out of this exchange like he might have to if he was going his backhand to Rafa's forehand. He's going to, Fed would get hammered in that instance. But he, he can stay in these, he can hang in these rallies, right? He'll be okay. So the first thing would be looking for, would be kind of goading, so to speak, Novak into that down the line. And the second would be, you know, if Roger gets a look here, hit that ball, you know, go after it and, and try and pull Djokovic off the court over to the backhand side. And then if Fed kind of chills here, anything in this area is going to be a forehand he can put over there. And Djokovic, if he can hit, if Fed can get a nice backhand off cross court, Djokovic has to go really quality shot down the line to get Fed on the run, or he has to get a really, you know, really, really, there we go, I got it, really well struck ball into the open court over here. So I really like the backhand for Fed in terms of this matchup here. And really the key, you know, from a mental standpoint, it's the patience that's so important. Fed really needs to be patient and not try and, especially on the backhand, try and, uh, you know, rip it too early in the rally. Again, a lot of variety. And if, if Fed, you know, Fed loves to hit that inside out, inside in, if he gets that look, don't try and hit it a million miles an hour. You know, Djokovic is going to, Djokovic is fine on those things, right? He doesn't, he doesn't have too much problem with the pace. So you really got to stretch them off the court and the, you know, open up windows to hit into where you don't have to just blast the ball to, uh, to win the point. So I, this is the main exchange it, you know, I would be looking for from, from Federer's perspective because it's something he had success with in the past, and I really think he needs to, to, to go back to that and, and be, be disciplined about it because, it, especially at, 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 uh, in... Um, you know, from the mental perspective, in, in uh, the Aussie Open, Federer did this in the second set, uh, got up in the second set, then kind of went away from that tactic. Back, He went back to kind of hitting, trying to hit big, and then he obviously lost in straights. And then in, in uh, Indian Wells, 
he won the second set doing this, and then the third set was kind of this weird mental lapse on his part where they were tied to all. Federer was up 40-15, gets it back to Deuce. Djokovic gets a, a, a break point, and then Federer double faults, and then kind of the wheels came off the wagon. So I think the mental end here is huge as well. And then finally, of course, you know, Djokovic, a great returner. We've talked about the, uh, the court positioning. I think Fed really should utilize the out wide serves on both parts of, uh, on both the ad court or deuce court, ad court to have Djokovic off the court initially and have a lot of open court to, uh, to work with. Obviously high first serve percentage given how well Djokovic has been returning. So that is my take on this match. Again, I, I am going with Djokovic. I'm going to go Djokovic five sets. I think Federer has been playing very well. I think, um, you know, I, I, I think certainly better than he than when he was playing uh, in, in Indian Wells. Federer was playing well in, uh, in the Aussie Open. But, but I think this is going to be a, a great match, a close match. Djokovic in five sets. So please let me know what you think of these tactics below. What are your predictions? Let me know in the comments below. Got to type fast because the match starts very soon. So we got to get all the predictions in beforehand. It's obviously uh, once the match happens, you, uh, you already know what, what went down. All right. Well, with that in mind, I, uh, I hope you liked this video. I enjoyed making it for you. And we will find out in a few short hours uh, how this match turns out.